Bill Crane here, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the outpouring of interest in what I'm doing to lose weight and all the support that I've received on my almost what seems like miraculous weight loss is is very, well, it's humbling. And it, it's also concerning because obviously it's a it's a major issue, not only for me, but for so many people, so many friends uh, that I have obviously have similar issues. And thankfully, I have uh, figured out what works for me, and I believe that it will work for so many of you. So what I would like to do, if you can indulge me, is take you on a journey. How did I get here? How did I arrive at this place? What have I gone through so that you can relate to what I'm doing and you understand why it's working and that it makes sense because I don't want to just blurt out what I'm doing there because if it doesn't make sense, then you're not going to do it. And the most important thing is that it works for you. Now that might make it sound complex, but it's not. Actually, I call this plan the simple plan because what I have done is literally thrown out the window everything that I've learned from dieting, from fitness people, and even from doctors. And I've just gone to absolutely what makes sense. Uh, I've actually put in over a thousand hours in, in research over the last few years. And how it all started with me is I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And You know, that, I guess it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Like I'm sure it would probably has, has freaked out millions of other people. So the most important thing to me is that this absolutely work for you. And as a teacher, a trainer, a coach, and a mentor to other business people and real estate professionals uh, all across the country, during the last 10 years or so, I've learned how to transfer those skills that require no talent, I've learned how to transfer my skills that I've learned through vast experience to my students in the business world. So I thought to myself, well, it makes perfect sense to use the same exact process in transferring what I've learned through my experience, that what's working for me, because I never share anything that doesn't work. I've failed tons and tons of times not only in business, but in life, and in this case, in weight loss. And But I keep trying, and I do it over and over until I figure out what works, and that's exactly what I've done here. I figured out what works for me. So that's what I'm sharing with you. Uh, obviously, I'm not a doctor. I'm a realtor by trade, and I, I've got sales experience my entire life. I've been in sales. And... So I'm not a doctor. I didn't go to school. I'm not a, obviously you can take one look at me and tell I'm not a, uh, what do you call those people? A uh, fitness instructor or a uh, personal trainer. That's pretty obvious. Uh, but what I am is a guy who spent most of his life being fat, trying dozens and do, you know, probably hundreds of different diets. Everything I've ever tried failed. None of it worked. Why didn't it work? There's a lot of reasons why it didn't work that I'm sure that you can relate to. Discipline. First and foremost, they tell you everything in moderation. So, so yeah, my house is filled with cookies and cake and ice cream, chips of every kind. And I didn't have the discipline. Oh, I would try. I uh, Man, I tried really hard. And I would go a few days and sometimes a couple weeks, whatever. And But it was so painful. I just... I couldn't do it long term. So what I did because I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is I followed the doctor's protocol and I took the medication. And the interesting thing is when I when I first started and they said, Bill, you've got type 2 diabetes. And I said, are you sure? And they said, yeah, yeah there's no doubt you that you have type 2 diabetes. And it's caused, if people don't know, in my opinion at least, and the research that I've done supports it now through massive amounts of carbohydrate intake. 
sugar, raises our sugar to dangerous levels. So what I did was I followed the doctor's protocol. And when I started, when he told me that I had type 2, I was only at a 7.4 on the A1C scale. And maybe you know what that is, and maybe you don't. But most people who have similar problems, medical issues like I did, know exactly what that means. So basically, it's not all that bad. It gets a whole lot worse. But they put me on a medication. And then I went back every six months. And what happened after six months? It got substantially worse. And I said, Doc, I'm pretty sure that this medication is actually having adverse effects for me. I, I've got, I feel tired all the time. I'm gaining weight. I'm lethargic. It's harder to wake up in the morning. He says, okay, yeah, well, what we need to do is we need to increase the dose. So they doubled the dosage of the medication. And then they tripled it another six months. And after another six months, they actually quadrupled it. And six months after that, they said, okay, well, that's not working. We want to try a different medication. So what did I do? Because I was programmed that you got to listen to your doctor. I took the other medication. And exactly the same thing happened after six months. Then they doubled it. Then after another six months, they said, well, we want to create a cocktail. And we want you to take both of those medications. And when that didn't work, they wanted to put me on another medication. And they said, well, that, that medication sounds really familiar. And I'm not naming names on the medications here because I don't want to get sued by any of these companies who think that I'm giving them a bad name. Because look, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV and I don't claim to be. And I'm also not an expert on any of these drugs. And maybe they helped some people, but I don't think they helped me. My problem was carbohydrate intolerance, bottom line. Yeah, caused by abuse of eating that stuff my entire life. And that's partially how I was raised. And then obviously I continued it and made it worse. So when they put me on this last drug, I said, that sounds really familiar. I'm not sure what that is. So, so when I got home, uh, I looked it up. And sure enough, I found out what it was. And it was one of those drugs that you see on TV all the time. Uh, they had, the, the commercial is half the length of the disclosure. So you can take this drug and you might not die of that disease, but you'll probably die of this drug or get your legs cut off or lose your eyes or just whatever. I'm like, why are you kidding me? And then you see the commercials for those same drugs that were hot a couple of years ago that now have class action lawsuits. And, and I didn't want to be a part of that. So I didn't take it. Uh, I lied to my doctor. I told him I was taking it and I didn't take it. And the interesting thing was I got to the point where I just really didn't care anymore. So I, I, I didn't even check my sugar. I just didn't care. I figured, you know what? If type 2 diabetes is going to kill me, then then so be it. But I'm not taking all these ridiculous drugs. And six months went by, and I started to feel less lethargic. I started to have more energy, and I stopped gaining weight. It, I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I stopped gaining weight, and I was less lethargic. So when I went to the doctor, uh, my A1C had actually gone down about 30%. It was all the way up to about a 12 and came down to like a nine point something. And the doctor says, oh, wow, this is great. This, this drug's working for you. So uh, what we should probably do is up the dose a little bit and see if we can get you completely normalized. And I said, doc, I have a confession to make. I stopped taking a drug. I haven't been on any meds for six months. And he asked me why. And just like I told you a couple minutes ago, I said, because, Doc, I have no interest of dying of that drug, nor do I have any interest in being part of a class action lawsuit a couple years from now. So I'm not taking it. And that's the bottom line. If type 2 is going to kill me, so be it. I'm not taking any of your ridiculous drugs. And to my surprise, what he said was, okay, Bill, I, we're really not supposed to tell this to people. And I always hesitate to tell people because, you know, most people 
just want to take a pill. But there's new research and data out that says, yes, you can absolutely cure type 2 diabetes with diet, with proper diet. Not talking about dieting, not talking about starvation, just proper diet and good eating habits because the American diet is absolutely killing people. It's not good and it's not healthy. And they said, well, doc, that's interesting because, you know, you're the third doctor I've had in the last five years. I had to keep changing because of insurance. And, and I talked about this to the other two doctors and to you when I switched over to you 18 months ago. And every one of you said, no, you've got to take the medication. You can't cure this with diet. You're going to have to take the medication. And that shut me down. So I said, whatever. And, you know, and I kept researching it, but I kept eating the, the same normal American diet that I was my entire life. Uh, but in the last six months, I stopped taking the meds. And he said, okay, well, yeah, you can cure it with proper diet. And then he started telling me the way that I need to eat. And he told me the movie that I need to watch that's on Netflix called Forks Over Knives. And I said, Doc, I watched that movie five years ago. I've done all this research. I know all this stuff. I told it to you. and You told me I couldn't do it, that it wasn't going to work. And now you're telling me it can work. What is going on? He said, well, you know, things, things change. And this new research says that it, that it does work. And people are getting off their meds very quickly. And so I said, okay, Doc, fantastic. So what I did is I, is I went home. And, you know, if you've ever followed any kind of diet plan or whatever, you found out that uh, they want you to throw everything away. And I decided, you know, I'm not going to throw everything away. I'm going to do something that's totally contradictory to what they say. I'm going to do what makes sense to me. So what I did is I absolutely said... Uh, I'm going to have one last blast. And I went out with a bang and I ate it all. I ate the cake, the cookies, the ice cream, the chips, everything. And my wife said, Bill, what on earth are you doing? And I said, I am going on a diet. <laughs> and she's like, you could have fooled me. Doesn't look, you're eating like a pig. And I said, yeah. You know what? Because I need to get rid of this stuff as fast as possible. I'm going to enjoy it. And, and then I'm going to flip the switch and I'm not going to eat this stuff again. So, so if you're doing the shopping, don't buy it. And when I do the shopping, I'm not going to buy it. And if I find it in the house, I'm going to toss it because it's unhealthy for me. It's unhealthy for you. And most importantly, it's unhealthy for our kids. So it just shouldn't be in the house. Yeah, sure. If you go out to dinner once in a while and you want to have a dessert or whatever, it's great. But I don't know how you guys are living, but the way I live was carbs was the main staple. And it's not supposed to be that way. There's so much to this. They have the food pyramid inverted. And it, sh it shouldn't be. Uh, we evolved, if you think about this on evolutionary terms, we, we're not carnivores, right? We don't have canines like a dog or any wild animal that you can think of. So we're really not supposed to be meat eaters. We are primarily vegetarians. Uh, that's the way we evolved to eat vegetables and things like grains, things that grow on a plant, things that are easy because we weren't built to be able to run down a gazelle and kill it. And we certainly on an evolutionary scale didn't eat things that were made in a factory. And that's the biggest problem. All the stuff that they put in our food today is bad for us. So what did I do? What am I doing? The primary thing that I'm doing is if it was made in a factory, it's not going into my body. Bottom line. And, and that can include bread. It can include, you know, sugars and all kinds of carbs. Uh, the main thing that I'm doing is trying to eat natural. And no, I'm not going to the health food stores like Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. And I'm not buying organic. And certainly feel free. Go organic if you want to. Uh, sometimes I question whether that's real or if it's just a sticker on the product. But you do whatever you believe in. Uh, 
my main shift and the main thing I've done is cut out things that were made in the factory because those things are putting toxins into my body. So, so I'm primarily eating vegetables. And yes, you can get all the protein you want from vegetables. Broccoli's just as high, if not higher in vegetables than, than uh, steak. And, but yeah, steak tastes better than broccoli. There's no doubt about it. And, and I'll still eat steak once in a while. But the biggest thing is now that I've got those carbs out of my system, the weight is just melting off. No more chronic fatigue. I've got more energy than I've had in so many years. And the, the brain fog, there's no more brain fog. So focus, clarity, energy, jumping out of bed in the morning like I did years ago and being able to go, go, go all day long. I was absolutely shocked and amazed that last week all of a sudden I had so much energy that I wanted to exercise I wasn't forcing myself to exercise I decided I'm going for a walk and so I, I started I walked a, a half a mile and then a mile and a couple miles around my neighborhood I didn't go to a gym or anything and you can certainly do that but that's just not what I did and it's not what I'm doing and at some point maybe I'll start going to a gym but the bottom line is you don't have to and some people aren't aren't ready for that. Um, so what it really comes down to is you only have to have discipline in one place, in one place only. And where is that? You don't have to have discipline to go to the gym. You don't have to have discipline to not eat the crap that's in your pantry. What you have to have discipline for, and it's really not that hard, is at the grocery store. Just don't buy it. Don't, don't put that stuff in your shopping cart. Don't pay for it at the checkout. Don't put it in your car and bring it home. If that stuff is in your cabinet, in your pantry, you do not have the willpower to not eat it. And why test yourself? What are you going to do? Leave it sit there for the next 15 years until it rots away? No, of course not. If it's in your house, you're going to eat it. Same with me and same with you. So I'm just not tempting myself. And that's what makes it so simple. When I go to the grocery store, I'm, I'm learning so much about all kinds of different vegetables and making beautiful salads and different kinds of foods. And, and when I want a snack at night, I might slice up a tomato or slice up celery or, or some carrots, whatever. Look, this might sound like Okay, Bill, of course I knew that. Yeah, I know it too. But I didn't do it. And if you're watching this video still, then neither are you. But that's what we need to do. We're, it really comes down to an evolutionary scale. You need to be as close to vegetarian as possible, but it's still okay. Eat meat. Eat. You can even have junk once in a while but don't have it in your house because if you have it in your house if you're anything like me it's an addiction it's calling my name they say that sugar is eight it's either eight or nine times more addictive than cocaine now i never took cocaine but from what i hear it's pretty darn addictive so if sugar is eight or nine times more addictive why would we want to tempt ourselves with that no absolutely not so it's not in my house that's what's making it so much more simple than I've ever experienced any time in my life. And you know what? I don't have the cravings anymore. I just don't. And if you can get off the carbs, you're not going to have them either. So get rid of that stuff. I don't care if you eat it or throw it out or donate it, whatever you do, just get rid of it. Fill your house with things that are good, vegetables of every kind. Learn how to prepare them in different ways. I'm going to do future videos and show you how simple, if you don't already know. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's not. And that's what I learned, too, is when we do anything in life, if we take a shortcut, it's like the yin and the yang of things, right? So if something's supposed to be work, in other words, being healthy, preparing healthy food is a certain amount of work, and it's not a lot of work. But it's a lot more work than just ripping open a bag of chips or a candy bar or opening the 
ice cream container and, and eating all of that. It's more work than that. So when we try to take the shortcut, all that happens is that work transfers. And what does it transfer to? It transfers to being healthy. It makes it more work to be healthy. It makes it more work to lose weight, if not impossible, because we're constantly activating our insulin. When you activate your insulin, it triggers your body to store fat. When you don't activate your insulin, it triggers your body to burn fat. And that's really the bottom line of it all, is don't activate your insulin, insulin and you'll lose weight. Uh, that's my opinion. That's what's working for me. Uh, so cut out all those carbs, cut out all the crap. And I'm sure that just like me, you're going to start melting. So I, I look forward to, you know, I've gone on, on for, geez, it's been 20 minutes so far. I didn't think it was going to be that long. Uh, but hopefully some of this story is uh, resonating with you so that you want to follow this and you take it seriously. And in the next videos, I'll show you more of what I'm doing uh, so that you can do it too. And that's what it's all about. Let's get healthy together. Signing off now, Bill Crane. Have an amazing uh, week, weekend, weekday, whatever day it is. I don't know when you're watching this video. It's Saturday for me. And uh, I'm going to go and, and have a good healthy snack right now. So uh, I'm so happy. And when this starts working for you, I know that you will be too.